In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, beloved of the Lord, and happy Easter. Today is Monday, the 10th of April, 2023. It is Monday within the octave of Easter. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offspring, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 14, and verses 22 to 33. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 16. The response to the psalm is... Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. The Gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 8 to 15. I read from the first reading. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. But God raised him up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brethren, I may say to you confidently of the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you see and hear. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is we are called to be courageous witnesses of Christ. We are called to be courageous witnesses of Christ. Dear friends in Christ, the first reading on this second day within the Easter octave exhorts us to be witnesses of Christ to be witnesses of the truth that he is and that he represents. 
to be witnesses of the gospel. A witness is a person who renders account and testimony of what they have seen and of what they have heard. In the first reading we just listened to, Peter, addressing the men of Judea and all who dwelt in Jerusalem, said to them about Jesus, who was crucified and who had been raised. Peter said, This Jesus got raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Of course, Jesus appeared to them. They saw that the tomb was empty. Jesus appeared and showed himself to them. Not only did they hear, they saw, and they were witnesses of that truth. In the gospel, we encounter one of the scenes where the resurrected Jesus appeared and showed himself. It was to some women who were his close followers. Matthew chapter 28 verse 9. And the first thing Jesus told them was, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they should move to Galilee. They will see me there. Matthew chapter 28 verse 10. It was a command for them to be witnesses. Go and announce what you have seen. Go and tell them what you have heard. Dearly beloved of the Lord, when Jesus died, the apostles were taken away by fear. They locked themselves up in the upper room for fear of what the Jews might do to them. They thought it was all lost. They had not understood that passage of scripture that said Jesus had to rise from the dead. But when he rose and they saw that the tomb was empty and they saw that he appeared to them and showed himself to them and also from the testimony of the women who saw him, the apostles were driven by courage to be witnesses and they spoke boldly to the men of Judea that Jesus whom you crucified, he is risen, hallelujah, and we are witnesses. In our world today, as was in Jesus' day, there is a very conscious and deliberate attempt to kill the truth, to kill Christ. Yes, when Jesus rose and conquered death, the story that went about was that his body was stolen. They wanted to deny the truth and they began to propagate falsehood and lies, fake stories, all in an attempt to kill and destroy the truth. We still have many elders, chief priests, Pharisees and soldiers like in Jesus' day who want to cover the truth, the truth of God, the truth of Christianity, the truth of Christ, the truth of the gospel, the truth of conscience. There are many who want to deny the truth. They see the truth, they know it, but they do not want to accept it. They had rather told lies than accept the truth. They had rather give in to secularism than to accept the gospel truth. They want to try to change the gospel message to suit them and the things that they do. Many pastors, bishops, priests, and Christians are being massacred, killed every day so that the truth that they represent may not be spoken or known. But dear God's good people, no matter how much we try to kill the truth, we can never kill it. You may kill those who speak the truth, but you may never kill the truth. Many in our world still do not know Christ and the church. Therefore, we are exalted by today's readings to be witnesses of Christ, to preach Christ by word of mouth, and to preach Christ by our way of life. Preach Christ and live Christ. If we still have the many vices eating up our world, hatred, wickedness, corruption, could it be said that those of us who are Christians are not witnessing enough? Christians fear. Christians shy away from the truth. Christians are timid to represent the truth. No wonder our world is eaten up by decay and corruption because the Christians who exist in our world 
are timid to be witnesses. Peter and the apostles were not afraid. They spoke courageously to the men of Judea. Can people see you and hear you and be drawn to God? Can people come to believe in Christ, believe in the church by your witnessing? Let this be the homework. Go out and be a witness. Evangelii Nunziandi number 41 says, Enough of the preaching and the talking. Modern man will listen more to witnesses than to preachers. Let people begin to see you live the gospel by your life. If truly you are a Christian and you believe that Christ is risen and has conquered death, let us see you live the resurrection. Let the light of the resurrection shine out in your life. Be a witness of the truth of the resurrection. Be a witness of the truth of the gospel. Be a witness of the truth of the church so that those who do not believe, those who are not yet convinced by your life may come to know the truth and be convinced. Happy Easter and God bless you. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.